everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Mosh, and today I am talking to you about Ordali from the Quebec based Miserere Luminous. And this is a Sepulchral Productions release. And this is the second studio record from this project. The first coming out in 2009, so it's been a bit, so you could say that this is quite the anticipated sophomore effort. And this band is noticeable for featuring members of the projects Grease and Sombras Forets. And this record goes into this very captivating postish atmospheric black metal direction the music here sounds big it sounds lively yet it has that grisly black metal skeleton and there's also a lot of pronounced emotional runs this is a record packed with feeling and a lot of detail it seemed like every crevice is filled with something filled meaningfully it's a joy to put on a good pair of headphones and just try to absorb it all noir fave opens up quite cinematically with these echoing keys and these dark enchanting strings really sets in this haunting mood quite well but slowly these jagged guitars begin to crawl in while the drums skip forward and the vocals introduce these dramatic sharp howls it's all very post metal in its build and as i've already mentioned all the gaps are filled with these nice little touches whether it be a guitar floor so a cymbal run a a bass passage it's just so nuanced in its orchestration. But there's this moment where everything begins to kind of fade just for it all to come crashing down again with fiery aggression. And it's there, you know that this is going to be a ride. It's just so bleak in tone, met with this intricate, musicianship and the record sounds so good everything feels richly textured yet it has that ghostly cold black metal feel that i love it doesn't mute that at all some of the slower passages on this track feel essential in crafting that hazy atmosphere a lot of haunting arpeggios and winding melodies while the vocals come across particularly distressed and just oozing with emotion the guitars never seem to get too technical but they are very effective take for example these crunchy palm muted riffs they're heavy they're sawing they're just very well recorded the way that the guitars interact with each other working around each individual layer and, and part it it works in a way that produces these fascinating tapestries the thing des reves rides on these complex circular guitar licks and these buzzing bass grooves and the drums sound really bright but that just allows the very fierce playing to stand out even more mixed in are these harsh and aggressive down strums played with this pulsating gain that's just very dense and heavy while the other guitar rides off of that with these smoky tremolos all working together for this stellar blackened web all of the individual layers to this track are so pronounced and present and it makes the whole package feel quite massive and weighty you feel it pushing up against you in the most fascinating of ways and while there are these very dark twisted parts there are also a lot of sobering clean runs that 
give this track also a bit of a solemn beauty to it. La Fleur des Anx has this cold, depressed atmosphere, but it's interrupted by these mammoth, doomy riffs. It's just towering as it gives you this commanding hit to the gut, contrasting some of the cleaner, detailed work around them. The song is slow moving and patient, yet you feel everything swelling around you, every detail coming out so clear that it seems busier than it is. And that's quite impressive, while everything kind of races towards this skyward peak. It's really a fantastic example of this crescendo technique. Les Colors de Perret starts as this instrumental with cold strings and shimmering guitar cycles. It creates this drifting, serene setting for you to experience. It's such a rich palette that the band begins to work with. And wow, there is such an openness. The drummer surprisingly comes through with such a demanding physicality. Just wow, there's this space just flies around all over the toms. And with everything so subdued, you're going to notice. You can't ignore it. It's really cool as it bleeds right into the Venonet Dos. Here you get these vampiric pianos and deeply somber strings only to be hit by probably the heaviest part on the album. Crushing guitars, ravaging drum fills, and these screams that will get every hair on your arm standing up. The way the band moves from parts like this to cleaner section to these dreary bits transporting you through various moods like a symphony it's exceptional also here notice the vocal doubling that will get your spine tingling for sure orderly is such a heavily detailed and deeply crafted record you can feel and tell that every note was given so much care Every moment comes across completely intentional. The production is breathtaking. Such a full, crisp sound that still allows its harshness to really grip you. And to say this album is atmospheric would be kind of an understatement. The environment that they transport you into is so mystifying and hypnotic and effective. Yes, it, it works. This record is great. And hey, those are my thoughts. If you enjoy what I do, hit the like button. You mean the world to me if you consider subscribing. Leave a comment. I really love getting to engage with those. I have a Twitter you can follow. Link to that in the bio of this YouTube channel. And hey, keep it metal. My name is Maddie. AKA Beaver Mosh, and I am signing off.